We're back with more swatches. You prompted us asking for swatches in the collection filters. Here it is. The approach we're going to take is to maintain the checkbox functionality of our existing filters, but we're going to add a little swatch beside the text, similar to how Allo Yoga does it. Now, many of our videos come from your customization requests. So prompt us with the customization you're looking for by adding it in the comments below. We read every one of them, so your suggestion just might be the next video. All right, let's get to our filter swatches. Before starting, make sure that you've added the collection filters um, like this, and also the swatches either on the collection page here or on the product page, because we're going to be building off of those videos. I'll add links to those videos in the description below. So now that you've got filters and swatches installed on your store, we can make some additional modifications to get the swatches in your filter menu. So first, we're going to head over to the themes area of your store and make a copy of your existing theme so that if you ever make any mistakes, you can always revert back to your older version. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit code and we're going to open up the facets.liquid file. The facets.liquid file is actually the code that controls how the filters work on your collection page. So what we're going to do now is we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for a couple of things. So the first checkpoint here is this uh, case filter.type and the when boolean list. And from here, you can scroll down just a little bit further. You're going to see some liquid code um, if you're on the Dawn version 12. And you're also going to see this list class, um, which should be there uh, on version 11 and 12. So we're going to create some spacing here, and we're going to copy and paste our first snippet. And so this is it right here. Let's uh, fix the formatting a little bit. OK, so I want to turn your attention to these two variables at the top here. The first one is the meta object entry that we've created previously. Um, so if you uh, come here, you can open up the variant swatch mapping that we created previously. Um, if you've named it differently, then you're going to need to uh, match the name that uh, that you've created to the code right here. Um, but if you've just followed our instructions from the previous videos, then this should be fine the way it is. The next one is the actual uh, variant option that you are going to be filtering on. So in our case, we're using color. Right, so we actually want to add swatches to our color filter. Um, but if you want to use a different one, let's say material, then you just need to change the text to say material. It should just match whatever the, the name is. Um, you just have to make sure that you also include the filter.v.option uh, in front of it. OK, so let's go back to color. Um, so that's this section. Next, you're going to see here there's going to be this input uh, element, which is going to be type checkbox. And then we're going to scroll down a little bit. There's going to be a couple SVG sections and then a span with uh, the value of the checkbox text. So that's going to be the, in this case, black, blue, green, red. And we're going to just create some spaces up here. And this is where we're going to paste our second uh, code snippet. So that's going to be this right here. And so we can just kind of tab that a few times. Um, and there's going to be actually a couple more spots where you're going to need to paste this code. Um, they're all going to be for these uh, checkbox input elements. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look for the next one. So this is line 243. There's another one at 339, right? And so it's got a similar structure. It's got some SVGs and then a span. So we're going to create some spaces there and add our code and just format that a little bit. And again, we're going to look for our checkbox again. Line 826, we've got a couple SVG sections and span right there. And we're going to paste in our code again. And that should be it, but let's just check to make sure we come back up to 243. Okay, so now we can 
scroll all the way to the bottom and we're going to add a little bit of CSS. This is the styling for our swatches. So we'll just add that at the end there and we can just save. And now that we've saved, we can come back out to our collection page, just give that a little refresh, and we should see some swatches showing up. There we go. Now, you're going to see here that there's uh, the blue and green are showing up with images, and you know, black, red, and white. We've just got these white, um, these white swatches here. And so the reason for that is because we're looking for an image but uh, we've only specified one for the blue and green colors. You can actually see here where it shows the blue and the green, but it defaults to the actual variant image in the other cases, right? So uh, you can see the black shirt here. We can see the red shirt here. Um, same thing with the long sleeves and the hoodie. But in our filters, you know, we've got black for all three of these products, but these are different images each time. So it doesn't really quite match if we use one of these images. And so what we're going to do is we're going to update our meta object to specify a hex code so that if we don't put an image in place, then it can just default to that hex code. Um, so let's do that right now. So this was our meta object we were looking at earlier. And we can see here, right, we've only put the blue and the green in place. And we want to actually specify those hex codes. But first, before we do that, we actually have to change our meta object schema, which defines what variables we can actually put in here. So we're going to go to settings. Uh, we can leave custom data uh, and our variant swatch map, variant images, JSON, and then we just format that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this little variable right here. Right, color swatch. So we already have the variant name, variant value, variant swatch, and now we're adding the color swatch, which is going to be the hex code that we're adding then. And so that's just right here that we've added to our previous schema. So we can click done and save that. And we can come back out, and now we can update our JSON. And what we're going to do is just add a definition for our black, red, and white colors. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in there, right? So now I've added uh, I've added these entries right here. So we've got black, we've got red, we've got white along with our blue and green. So now we have an entry for every single one of our colors. In some cases, we've specified a file. In other cases, we've left it blank but specified a color swatch. So the way our schema works is that the color swatch is optional. Um, we don't necessarily have to put in there. But the variant swatch, which is the image file, has to be there every time. Um, so even if it's blank, we have to put that in place. And in fact, actually, all three of these, these first three variables, you're going to need to add it for every single entry. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, color swatch is optional. OK, so let's save that. And now if we refresh, we should see those swatches show up. So now we've got the black, red, and white showing up because it's defaulting back to the hex code um, if it doesn't have any images there. And again, now that you have you have to place those values in the the uh, the JSON entry. If you don't put it in there, it's going to show what it was previously, which was just blank. OK, so so that's pretty much all you need if all you cared about was to put the color in place. Um, but if we come back to our t-shirt, we actually have two variant options that have swatches, right? We've got the color and the material. So what if you want your material to also show the swatches, not just the color? We can actually do that. So if we come back to our code um, and come back to where we placed our very first um, snippet, right? So this one right here where we were talking about these different settings right here. So what we can do is we can actually make this a list. So we can um, add a second variable. So this one color and the second one can be material. And we can save that. And now if we refresh, 
it's also going to be pulling the swatches for the material. And that's pretty much it. So what I'm actually going to do is um, I'm going to pull this these two variables out from this section and place it right at the top because that doesn't need to be right there. Um, and this will be a little bit easier for you guys to uh, find if you ever want to change these variables because these are more like settings. They don't need to be placed exactly where um, the previous snippets are. So I'll just, uh, that's why I'm going to place it up here. So we can save that. We can refresh again. And we can see here that we've got our swatches in place. Thanks for watching. I hope these videos are helpful for you. And like we mentioned previously, your customization requests are what we make videos for. So prompt us by adding it in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.